at this point uh, running the project, you should only see the welcome page. I want to go from welcome to the other screen. We'll set up the ability to start to log in and all of that soon. But we'll set up a, a simple navigation and then we'll set up the proper nav navigation. So the welcome page, this could be like a splash screen or any complexity we want to do, but to make it obvious in the beginning, the welcome screen will have the name of the app and it'll have two buttons log in or sign up so uh, in your I'm gonna refer to these as pages or sections by their IDs in page welcome in the section of page welcome let's change the h1 so that it's also the name of the app CBDB maybe in a fun spelling then I'm going to have it say welcome. All right, welcome to the app. After welcome. Here's where we have the H3 to say to ask returning user. Go here and new user, go here. So it's marked as returning users go here, new users go there. That will be a button. So after returning user, create the A tag, because we know this will be a link. We'll say log in. And for new users, sign up. I'm just going to tab these a little bit to read them. That's optional. This is sort of a section here of content returning or new. I'm just tabbing it to, to be able to read it. Well, log in is going to go to a screen that doesn't exist yet. But we are starting to set up sign up. We can link that one so far. href pound page sign up. If you're a new user, you're going to click here. It's going to go to the new user process, which is its own section, page, PG sign up. I want this to look like a button. What's the magic that we add to a link to make it a button? Because of jQuery Mobile. I think I heard someone say, data role equals button. I want a transition here of slide up. I want a new screen to slide into view. Data transition. Data transition. I want data transition slide up so that we get a brand new screen to sign up. Data <coughs> transition. Equals <coughs> flip. I'm not sorry, uh, slide up. We'll use slip for something else. Slide up. One word, no capitalization. Uh, jQuery team named it like that with no capitalization, but usually there will be a capital letter or a dash that separates words. Everyone, see the thing about standards, they're great. Everyone can make a standard. So that one, they have it lowercase. We can add an icon. I'd have to go look up to jQueryMobile.com to find an icon that would make sense here. Well, maybe that we, there's an icon of user, a little icon of a person. 
click here to go create an account. And let's try that one. Data-icon equals user. You can save it and test it, and what should happen is you click on this button, and it does go then to the sign-up screen, and animation should move the sign-up screen into view. Let's see, so if I save it and run it, this is what I've got so far. Welcome, returning user, we'll make that a nicer button in a moment. Sign up, I click on that, it should then slide up to display the sign up screen. We're stuck here. Yes, we've got the browser button back, but we're not going to have a back button in a device. We have a back button on an Android device, but we don't have a back button on an iPhone and an iPad. So we'll need a way to go back in a moment. We yeah we did a copy and paste of template and we called it PG sign up. So the the way that we can go back once we go to section page sign up there's a way for us to add an easy button to take us back one level in history. Because once we get to that sign up, what we can do there is create the account and move forward or go back one page. So we have something we can add to the section of page sign up to take us back one position. Inside of the header of sign up, the data role header, data position fixed. We'll add one more attribute here. This one's an this one's an interesting one. It has one purpose: data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. This will add a simple back button. It can be customized, but we'll keep it simple. This will add a back button to the header in your sign up page. PG sign up so that it simply takes you back one point in history, back to the welcome screen, if you need to. Whoops, I didn't need to create a new account. I actually want to sign in. So that add back button is just to take you back one screen. It is spelled like that in this weird way, btn, not button. Data add back btn. Now be careful here. Uh, I see a lot of you refreshing your screen instead of rerunning it. That's fine. The problem with that is I, when I run my project every time, it creates history. So when I click sign up, I have somewhere to go back. If you refresh from here, there's no history. So there's no back button. If you don't see your back button, don't refresh from the screen. There's no way to go back to. Refresh from the index from PG Welcome. And then when you go to sign up, you have a history to go back to. To make this complete, the functionality of it will come later, but to make it complete screen-wise, I want the button of login to work properly. Sign up works by having an href to the name of an ID of a section, which doesn't exist yet. But we will set up the link and then create the section, either or. Create the section, then make the link or make the link then create the section. You need them both, but the order doesn't quite matter. So back up to where you've got login. Mine is on line 18. href pound pg login. 
section PG login does not exist yet. We'll create it in a moment. But we need the data role, data transition, data icon. Data role button. Data transition. Copy and paste would work too. But I want to change this to be a flip. I want a certain animation to catch the person's attention. Slide up is to catch their attention. You're going to create an account. Flip is going to be that we go from screen to screen in a normal way. So that's the point of possibly using different transitions to catch their attention. Data icon. Error. What's that? Error. Data icon error. Error. Oh, okay, but we have to specify the error, the arrow R to the right. We could have the icon of uh, appear on the right of the button with data icon pos icon position is right. So for my button to log in, I've got an icon arrow R, an arrow that points to the right. And guess what? We have arrow. Error, arrow, dash U, arrow, dash D, up, down, left, right. We even have them diagonal. And then if I want to move the icon to the right of the button, data icon pos, data icon position equals right. The default is left. We don't have to specify it, but with right, it goes to the right. Data icon pos equals top. We'll put it at the top of the button, or bottom. We'll put it at the bottom. So to check this, it doesn't work yet, but I've got a login, I've got a sign up, I click sign up, I do see the sign up screen, I've got a back. If I try to click login, nothing works there yet because that section doesn't exist. We'll create that section very basically, and then once login works, we'll actually have it log in properly. But the login section, I've, I've, that's the whole point of creating this template. I've got already a chunk of code that I can copy and paste multiple times to create new screens quickly. So I'm going to copy the template code and paste it. I want to leave template as the very last one always. I'm going to copy that template. This is now login page start, login page end, section PG. Uh, log in. Just make a message here, log in. Log in, page start. So in this copy of the template, I'm making the changes. PG log in. And I'll have it say simply so I can see it, log in. Now I've got somewhere for the button to go to, PG login. I could have the same concept where I didn't mean to log in, I haven't created an account, I need to go back. Out of the login screen, I need to go back to the welcome screen. So same thing, we can add to the header of the PG login, data add back button equals true to go back one point in history. 
data add back etn equals true. Remember, if you are already in the login screen and you just refresh the login screen, there's no back to go to. There's no history. Refresh from the home from PG Home, and then you can see the history to go back and forth. So checking my project, this welcome screen, we're making it very obvious for the moment. We will make it nicer later with some graphics. Um, what you often see in an app is, well, instead of having a separate screen to log in, why don't we just add it here? We could do that, yes. I want to separate them for the moment, and then we can integrate them if we want later on. But imagine that the login screen will be a screen dedicated to logging in. Uh, name and password, which could be added here. We'll do it later. Sign up is going to be a screen dedicated to you to fill in your credentials to sign up for an account. I didn't mean to do it, so I'll go back. I didn't mean to log in. I don't have an account. I can go back. So this is our project so far. Three screens, three sections, each with a unique identifier. See how our code is shaping up at a glance, even if I'm zoomed out like this and you can't read it at a glance. Your comment should help navigate you about where you are in general. I can see the comment here and read it and see this is where my section ends of the sign up. Let's start setting up our sign-up page first. In order for all of that login to work, well, we need to create an account. The user needs to create an account, so we'll create a, a sign-up system. We'll see that when we create this project, relatively little time will be spent on the interface of things. Most of the time will be spent on the functionality. The interface is HTML and CSS, so the functionality is what of the three languages? jQuery, jQuery JavaScript, yeah. So most of it to do the logging in, to check the password, to retrieve the credentials, that's going to be JavaScript. And that's honestly, <clears throat> honestly going to be comparatively harder. The HTML and the CSS are easier. HTML is the easiest one of all to learn. CSS is second easiest, and JavaScript is hard. I don't want to scare you, but JavaScript is hard because of the many possibilities that could go wrong. That's why, as I said before, HTML plus CSS, one book, 500 pages. JavaScript, one book, 600 pages. So before we get to the JavaScript, in the section of PG Sign Up, I want to create a form to ask people for their for credentials to create an account. So in the article, after the sign up message, well actually, before that, um, H1 up here, we'll call it the name of the app, CBDB. And actually, we don't really need a footer in this particular screen. I don't really want to display anything at the bottom of the screen. We can have a section without a footer. That's fine. Design-wise, I don't want a footer. I want a header with the name of the app, and I want an article for the main content where the form will be, and I don't want a footer in the P 
PG sign up, so I'll just delete it completely. I can comment it, but we're not going to use it, so I'll delete it. The difference is I didn't sign up. It's just like that. Header, content, no footer. So in the article, we're going to create a form. Not a forum, but a form to ask the user for information. We're going to add an ID attribute here. We will see that IDs are very useful when we talk about CSS for styling, <coughs> and then also very important for JavaScript. JavaScript will be able to identify this form and the stuff inside of it. We'll call this form sign up. We're going to make it very simple. We're not going to ask for a lot of credentials. We're just going to ask for an email and a password. We could ask for a last name and a first name and a middle name and an age and all of that stuff. But all I want is to really deal with an email and a password. So we're going to ask for an email and ask for a password. We'll mark it up properly in just a moment. We'll mark it up properly in just a moment. But we're going to ask for an email, we're going to ask for a password. input field, input field. <coughs> input attribute, the type of data that I can accept. People will be, in, be able to input data in this form and the type of data that I will accept is email. For the password, the type of data that I can accept is a password. Save it and run it just to take a quick look at it. It needs a lot of refinement still. But just look at it. We've, we're creating a form, a sign-up process. We're asking for an email and a password with some simple HTML, let the person input an email, let the person input a password. By looking it up in the book, we can see, well, we can let people input a date, like a, a little, we can make a little calendar pop up to choose a date. We can in, let people input a number, so only numbers are valid inputs, or text, or other kinds of inputs. It's chapter like seven, all about forms. To confirm the password, um, it would be a separate, a, a separate input field. Yes, two, so that we can confirm a password. We'll do that in a moment. But just to check it, if I click sign up, there's a spot for an email and there's a spot for a password. That's popping up red in my case, Firefox. Not a valid email. So there's a little bit of built-in checking about what is valid. I put in a fake address and it said, great, that's a great email. But if it's not in the format, it'll say, uh, that's not an email. And then the password has little dots right there to hide it. Whatever I'm typing here will be hidden. Where is the information? Nowhere. That's where the JavaScript comes in. It's not, it doesn't know what to do with our data yet. We're just creating the form, and then eventually we'll capture the data to do something with it via JavaScript. Let's refine this a lot more. Um, technically, these input fields are not um, saying <coughs> that these elements are required until we add another attribute. Required. This one's an odd one. 
it's valid to simply have the value, the attribute of required. What's also valid is required equals required. Instead of required equals true or false. It's required equals required. Either way works. Simply required or required equals required. So by having a type of email, all it's checking is that you typed an email. But with required, it will also check that you filled it in. This makes more sense, obviously, if we had last name, first name, age, and such. With only two fields to fill in, it, it's a bit redundant. Um, I want to add an attribute of the email of placeholder. This will be placeholder text that appears to show people this is what you should type. So I can make up an email address here. John at smith.com. And what will happen there is that text will appear in the box, and when the person starts to type, it'll disappear. In the old days, that required a lot of fancy JavaScript on our part to check when did the person click in the box. Okay, remove the text there, now make it blank, and blah, blah, blah. Now with this simply placeholder attribute, the result is that it has a little placeholder. You should type an email here. And as you start to type, it'll, it'll go away automatically. And then also because we put required, in my case, it's popping up, please fill out this field. We don't want a placeholder for the password. It's not even going to be visible. It's just going to be dots. But other fields also. Let's say we're creating, later on when we're creating the functionality to save a comic or save the inventory, we will have various boxes to be filled in. We want definitely, for example, the name of the comic and the number of the comic required. And there'll be a field for notes. That doesn't have to be required. A person can add a note to that comic, yes or no. So required. And placeholder as well. Putting placeholder on the note or anywhere else to show them what you should type in this box. This text that is over here, email, it's kind of floating there. It's not really marked as anything. And pretty much everything in, in an HTML file should be marked with some tag to give it meaning. It kind of works. But to be more correct, we need a tag here. Let's add the label tag around email. The purpose of this text is that now it's a label. This is a label in our form. And this label basically is related to this input. This label is being used for this input. doesn't know that yet because it needs the attribute for. This label is going to be used for this input field. We'll call this in email sign up. In for an input. There's some input somewhere with the name of email sign up. We're going to have email sign up, email login. We need to retrieve the email or look at the email for one purpose and another purpose. This is my rationale for that name. For is an attribute to identify this label so that this input knows they're related. To complete that, we then need the input to have an attribute of name, the exact same name that is for. Continuing, placeholder attribute, name attribute, that exact same four attributes that I added to the label. Now, the input knows it has a label. 
Now the label knows it's attached to an input. And the last thing we need here is an ID when we get to the JavaScript so that when someone types an email here, we can capture that email and do something with it. Right now it's just going off somewhere. The data that you type in here goes nowhere until we use JavaScript to capture it. ID, and I'll do the exact same name. So the for and the name and the ID are exactly the same. They have different purposes, but I'm keeping it simple with the same value. We need to do the exact same thing for the password. A label around the word password with a for attribute, and then a name and an ID attribute in the input of the password. So for password, this needs a label. Needs a four. We'll do in password sign up. Capitalization does matter. Now we've marked properly the right tag for the right task. Label password. This is for input name in password signup and an ID in password signup. So to that input field, name and ID. My habit and the way I teach it is uh, to leave ID as the very last attribute. It doesn't really affect anything, but I like to leave ID as the very last attribute so I can find it quickly. You often have to refer to the ID of things and instead of me scanning through my line of code, I just know it's at the end. Because that ID is going to be very come in very handy when we get to JavaScript. Functionality-wise, visually that is, it looks the same. There it is. There it is before, there it is after. It looks the same. But technically, internally, it's better set up. It's got a label, it's got proper names and IDs and all of that. Uh, and what was meant, what was asked earlier, yes, we do want a password confirmation uh, field. I'm going to copy and paste, now that it's more complete, I'm going to copy and paste that whole label and input, copy and paste it below itself, and we'll just change a couple of details for confirm password. So in my case, line 37, where I've got that whole login, uh, that whole password, copy and paste that, and we'll change some details here. We'll say visually confirm password. We'll say in password confirm sign up. These IDs can be any length. In password confirm sign up. That will be used then as the name and ID. It's still input type of password. It's still required. But it's got to have these unique names and IDs. Or else if we don't change this, that label up here is going to try to be used for these two inputs, which is not quite right. Be very sure you change those. There's the first input, password sign up, and the second one of convert. 
Now when you run that, you have two input fields. Type your email, type your password, confirm your password. Once you fill in a form, what usually then happens? You submit it. So we will create a submit button. Next line. This one need, this one simply input. Doesn't need a label because the text is in the input button, but this one is of type submit. This will automatically create a submit button. Value is the text that will appear on the button. If we don't type anything, I believe it'll generically say submit query. No one ever says that in real life, so go, sure, or save, or create. The value is what will appear on the button. We're creating a submit button. Oops, not tip, type. Type. Input type of submit, value of go. This uh, needs also an ID. This also needs an ID so that when we write the JavaScript, we'll have many submit buttons to do different things. We need to identify this is the button that was clicked to run this JavaScript. So an ID is a way to do that. We'll call this btn sign up. This is a button, btn, this is a button that will sign up, that will sign the user up. Looking at it, I click sign up. I have a spot for an email, a password, and confirm. If I don't put in a proper email, but if I put in a password and the same password, I click go. I get an alert. Depending on your browser, it may look in different ways. Please enter email address. So there's a built in validation here. Okay, well, all I have to do is put in an email, something that looks like an email. <coughs> Click go. Nothing quite works yet. It takes you back to the home screen. Nothing's happening really at all. Don't trust it yet. But all that we've got is put in an email, put in a password. Now, this does not have password validation yet. I'm putting here a password of two letters, and I'm confirming it with a password of three letters. It'll say, okay, great. It's not testing that yet. That comes with the JavaScript to test. Is it the same password? So it's not working yet. This data is going nowhere. It's just in RAM. It's in memory at the moment. It has not been processed. But here's what our sign-up screen looks like so far.
we can set up a couple of messages that appear. If the password doesn't match, if the account already exists, right? some feedback. We can create some simple pop-ups via jQuery mobile by writing a little HTML. After the form, we're still inside the article, but after the form, we'll create a div. A div is a generic container, a division. This is a container that will have a message. I'll say first, passwords don't match. It'll be a message that says passwords don't match. In order for this to work as a pop-up, it needs a data role. Div by itself has no meaning. It's a generic container. With a data role, then it has a meaning. So we'll add a data role of pop-up. For it to look visually correct, class UI content. So we have a class of UI content up here for the article so that the content of the article looks nice. The div itself here also has the pop-up has a UI content so it looks consistent. And then we need an ID. This, this pop-up needs to happen in the event of trying to put in two different passwords. Question? Uh, why do you use instead of like a, a header like a it, it would work if we use headings, headers and such because conceptually h1 we reserve for the very top of the document, h4 we reserve for the very bottom, the footer, h2 and 3 I would want to use it for divisions that are visual on the screen. We could use I suppose h5 and h6, it should work, I hadn't quite thought about that, but a heading could work, it's just that the way that I, when I set this up div worked fine. <coughs> So I don't think there's a problem with using either. They're both block-level elements. Maybe one reason why not to use headings is because headings, H1s and such, have some built-in style that we might have to deactivate for us to make it look how we want. A div, it being a generic container, is you know empty enough for us to style it how we want. Um, we need the ID so that we can open it at the right time. A person tries to put in the wrong password, the JavaScript detects it, and then this pops up. So it needs an ID in order for us to access it via the JavaScript, and we'll call this uh, pop sign up exists. So a little prefix of anything that is a pop up, pop. And then this is sign up. Suppose uh, to make it even more, I thought I called it like this, but to make it even more obvious, pop error sign up exists. We can have more than one kind of error. So this is a pop up for an error. Specifically, the sign up exists. Sorry? The passwords don't match, that's true. Um, pop sign up mismatch. Uh, this, we're trying to do the error here that the passwords don't match, so uh, we could do mismatch, not exists, mismatch. Um. When I teach this, I try to be pretty verbose so that it makes sense, hopefully, what we're trying to create. 
although it's very common for people when they do this themselves to be so esoteric with what they name these things. Uh, I, I watched a fun video uh, the other day where a, where a guy makes, you know, the classic snake game, a little snake that runs around and he eats the pellet and it gets longer and longer. He writes a, he write, he creates a snake game in four minutes flat, just writing it by hand, but he's using so many shorthands and abbreviations because, you know, he's got to write it all in four minutes. And some of these things like, you know, GC equals GV equals D7, like that makes no sense for anyone looking at his code. I try to do the opposite, where it's very verbose, like this hopefully makes sense. It's a very long class and all of that, but hopefully it makes sense when you look at it um, as you work on it. And either way works. One is not right, one is not wrong, although the very short names, really you're the only person that's going to know what these things do unless you add comments. Let's do another pop-up error message. This one is going to be that if the account exists, you're trying to create an account with an email that already exists. I'm just going to copy this whole line and then change some details. Because it's going to be another data role pop-up. It's going to have the same class for styling. But here is where I wanted to do pop error sign up exists. And the message will be account already exists. different ID. One more, then we'll take a break. Okay, we've got error messages. Uh, we want a success. This one won't be complete yet. It's too early for it to be complete but uh, I'm going to do one for a successful creation of the account. Just paste the same one, and this time we will uh, call this one pop sign up success. Something like that would be better because um, it's a successful, it's not an error, pop up uh, success sign up. Just make it say success. It's going to look a lot nicer than that and it needs more setup than that. But this is good enough for the moment. It's another pop-up um, for success. That's a pop-up that will, will appear if you properly signed up. We cannot make these pop-ups appear yet, so if you run it, you won't be able to see these. We don't have the functionality here at all. It cannot check for mismatched passwords. It cannot check for creating an account properly, so we're not going to be able to see those until we start to write this JavaScript. But we'll pause at this point for our, for our second break to confirm that everyone's on the right track. It's 8.16. We'll be back at 8.26. We'll go on.